Hey everybody, this is a quick video review of cell basics. In this, I'm going to talk about the differences between prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells. And then I'm going to talk about the individual structures that you'll find inside eukaryotic cells, specifically comparing a plant cell and an animal cell. So when we look at cells, we can see the two major types, prokaryotic cells and eukaryotic cells. And as you can see here, prokaryotic cells are much smaller and have fewer noticeable structures. That's not to say that they're not complex, it's just that we will see that they don't have the same types of structures that we observe in eukaryotic cells. So when it comes to all cells, we see that all cells have a cell membrane, a barrier that separates the cell from the outside world. We also see that all cells have a cytoplasm, a liquid inside the cell membrane. The cytoplasm is the liquid material inside the cell membrane. Now, we'll also see, if we look at the Venn diagram on the bottom, prokaryotes and eukaryotes both have ribosomes. All cells have ribosomes. Ribosomes are the structures inside cells that make proteins, and all cells need to make proteins. We'll talk a little bit more about that as we get into eukaryotic cells later. When we look at just the eukaryotic cells, we're going to see that eukaryotic cells has a nucleus, which is the structure that contains DNA, and it also has membrane-bound organelles. These are specialized structures where certain functions will take place inside eukaryotic cells. This is basically divisions of labor within the eukaryotic cells. And part of the reason why eukaryotic cells are so much larger is because they contain these structures. Now, looking specifically at an example of a prokaryotic cell, you can see here a bacterial cell. And while bacteria do not have a nucleus, because they're prokaryotic, they do have a chromosome, so they are going to have DNA inside that cell. You'll also notice that they have the ribosomes and the plasma membrane. They also have a cell wall. Now, not all cells have cell walls. In fact, animal cells do not, but there are cell walls found in bacteria. Moving on to eukaryotic cells, we see two examples here. In the upper left, we see an example of an animal-like cell, and in the lower right, we see a plant-like cell. Now, again, it's important to note that the plasma membrane, or cell membrane, and ribosomes are found in both of these types of cells. The plasma membrane serves as a barrier between the cell and its environment, and the ribosomes are going to make proteins. What makes both animal-like cells and plant-like cells eukaryotic is that they have a nucleus. Now, the nucleus has a nuclear envelope, or a membrane that surrounds the nucleus, a nucleolus, which is a structure that actually makes the ribosomes that we found outside in the cytoplasm, and chromatin. And chromatin is the DNA of the cell that is wrapped around proteins. It is a slightly different structure than the chromosome that we saw in bacteria because of its wrapped up structure. The next group of organelles we're going to look at are a series of folded membranes. These include the endoplasmic reticulum, the Golgi apparatus, and you'll see in the animal cell will also include the lysosome in this category. Uh, we could include vacuoles in the plant cells uh, if we would like to as well. The endoplasmic reticulum has two types, the rough ER and the smooth ER. The rough ER is called rough because it actually appears to have bumps on it. Those bumps are ribosomes which make proteins. And so what we'll find is the endoplasmic reticulum will make some initial proteins and in the smooth ER we will make membrane components and they will then be wrapped up in little uh, compartments and sent off to the Golgi apparatus where the proteins may be modified and prepared to ship out into the cytoplasm or outside of the cell. So we can see in the animal cell, for example, a lysosome, which is a small membrane-bound structure, which contains digestive enzymes. Those enzymes would have been made on the ref ER they would have been modified by the Golgi, and then they'll be released into the cytoplasm where they could break down a food vacuole or recycle an old, no longer functioning organelle. The next group of organelles we'll look at are the mitochondria and the chloroplast. Now you'll notice that the mitochondria are found in both types of cells, both plants and animals, and these are organelles that are going to break down sugars and make cellular energy, or ATP. Chloroplasts, which are not found in animals but are found in plants, are going to be able to take light energy and make sugars. Now, the mitochondria and chloroplasts are considered different than the endoplasmic reticulum and Golgi apparatus 
even though they are membrane-bound organelles, their membrane structure, the fact that they have their own independent DNA, the fact that they have their own ribosomes, and many other features suggest that these organelles were once free-living independent bacteria, and through endosymbiotic theory, gave rise to the first true eukaryotic cells. So these, while they are membrane-bound, hold a special place amongst our organelles in the eukaryotic cells because of their evolutionary history. Next, we're going to look at the cytoskeleton. The cytoskeleton is a series of protein filaments and tubes, which basically provide structure and support within the cell. You can think of the skeleton within the human body, which provides both structure and support, and also through the pulling of those bones through the skeleton, we are able to move our bodies. Similarly, through the sliding of these different proteins, the microfilaments and the microtubules, individual cells can either move materials around inside the cell, or in the case of an animal-like cell, move the cell as a whole by either moving a cilia or a flagellum, or by moving pseudopods. So the last thing we want to do is compare the structures that we see in animal-like cells and plant-like cells. So what you'll see is over on the upper left, we see that there are centrioles and lysosomes. We've already discussed the lysosomes, so let me talk about the centrioles really quick. The centrioles are structures that are involved in cell division, but they're only found in cell division for animal cells. Over on the right, we can see the chloroplast. Again, we talked about that as a photosynthetic organelle. And cell walls. Now, cell walls are found in most kingdoms of living things. They're just not found within animals. So hopefully that was a useful review of both the types of cells that we see and the structures that are found inside them.